Welcome to my thesis defense. The title of my presentation today is Light Scattering Effects in Transparent Wood by Composites. The contents including introduction, objectives, results, and conclusions. First, we come to the introduction part. In 2015, the United Nations have agreed on 17 goals aiming for a sustainable world. And this thesis addressed some of them, including goals 9, 12, and 13, by making materials from renewable resources, such as trees. Wood from trees is kind of a renewable material combined with low environment impact and excellent mechanical performance. The transparent wood is an emerging material. It combines optical functionality and the good mechanical performance. The typical fabrication process for transparent wood, including lignin removal, to decrease the light absorption in the wood template. During this treatment, the wood structure is well preserved. And also, the porosity is increased due to the removal of lignin. And the next step, a refractive index matched monomer is infiltrated in order to decrease light scattering. And after this step, the cell lumen and the middle lamella are filled with polymer. Transparent wood has shown huge potential in various applications, such as for energy storage, solar cells, luminescent transparent wood for LEDs, and also light diffusers for buildings. So it is important to investigate the light and the transparent wood interaction in order to improve the fabrication process or manipulate the optical property of transparent wood. So how does the light and the transparent wood interaction look like? When an incident beam hit on the sample surface, the first thing happens is the reflect, specular reflection due to the refractive index mismatch between the surface of the polymer and air. And next, part of the light will be absorbed by, for example, the residue lignin inside the wood, transparent wood. And next, part of the light will be scattered, both forward and backward. And finally, the non-interacting part will transmit from the transparent wood without changing its propagation direction. And this part called ballistic transmission. But the backward part, two of this is called total reflection, and the forward transmitted part is called total transmission. All the contributions of the photons is called the photon budget. In addition to this, the transmitted photons also show an anisotropic scattering pattern on a screen behind the sample. So it is a complicated process for light and transparent wood interaction. The main reason is due to the complex structure of wood, including the aligned fibers and vessels along the tree growth direction, and also wood wreaths in perpendicular to fiber direction. In addition, the volume fraction of wood and the lignin content from different wood species are different. And also template modification and polymer, for example, refractive index and the compatibility between wood templates are different which influences the optical property of transparent wood. So, due to the complex structure of wood, it is difficult to describe the structure and optical property relationships for transparent wood. Thus, the objective of this thesis is to lay the foundation for investigations of relationships between structure of transparent wood and its optical properties and also suggest guidelines for future development of wood-based transparent materials. The result including four parts. The first one is analysis of anisotropic scattering property of transparent wood. And secondly, the thickness-dependent transmittance investigations, and also measurement of refractive index of delignified wood, and finally, the investigation of scattering mechanisms in transparent wood. Now we come to the first part, the anisotropic scattering property of transparent wood. Previous reports have shown this phenomenon qualitatively, 
where the anisotropic scattering is caused by the aligned fibers in the material. And in this work, we will quantitatively analyze the anisotropic scattering of transparent wood. The sample used in this study is the acetylated transparent wood, which is made from delignified and acetylated wood substrate infiltrated with the pre-polymerized methyl maculate, also called PMMA. So when the laser or light hit on the sample surface perpendicularly, the transmitted photons will show an anisotropic scattering pattern as shown on the right side. This, is, this perpendicular direction is to the fiber direction is stronger due to the alignment of the fiber as reported before. To analyze the scattering ability of transparent wood, uh, an angle, angular distribution of the transmitted photons is performed. Here, the transparent wood either placed like this or rotated for 90 degrees. So the detector mirrors the scattering angles both along perpendicular to the fiber direction and parallel to the fiber directions. Here are the two results for different thicknesses. It is clear that the scattering perpendicular to the fiber direction is always stronger than parallel to the fiber direction. And also, with sample thickness increase, the scattering distribution is broadened. To analyze the scattering ability of a transparent wood via the beam divergence, we use the full width of high maximum to describe this. It is the angle at the high maximum value of this distribution. Here is the flow with of high maximum as a function of sample thickness. We can see that when the sample thickness above 0 0.2 cm, both values are shown linear relationship, while when the sample thickness below 0 0.2 cm, it shows different dependence. This can be associated to the transport mean free parts, which means when the sample thickness at above this thickness, the ballistic photons will be absent and the scattering will dominate. To analyze the anisotropy of transparent wood, the degree of anisotropic scattering is suggested. It is defined as the flow with of a high maximum from either perpendicular to the direct fiber direction or parallel to the fiber direction, divided by sum of these two. For an isotropic material, it is clear that the DAS value is 0 0.5 in all directions, while it is deviates from 0 0.5 for anisotropic scattering material. In addition, both values for transparent wood is a constant, regardless of sample thickness. To summary this part, the anisotropic scattering material is a, of the, the transparent wood is analyzed which is caused by the alignment of the fibers in transparent wood. The degree of anisotropic scattering is suggested to describe the anisotropy of transparent wood. Transport mean free parts is a helpful optical parameter to describe the transparent wood optical property. In addition, the thickness influences the scattering ability of transparent wood. So how does the thickness influence the total transmittance? which is the number of the transmitted photons. That is the aim of part two. Previously, a lot of reports showing the transmittance data based on a single sample thickness, or reporting the relationship between total transmittance and the sample thickness using BLM law approximately. However, for scanning material, for example, transparent wood, the optical path length of the photon is longer than the sample thickness which means it is not applicable to use the Berlamp law for transparent material. To solve this problem, we prepared several kinds of uh, samples. And also previously we found the acetylated transparent wood showing better optical performance compared with the non-acetylated transparent wood. So we prepared these two for the comparison. Non-acetylated transparent wood is prepared by delignified wood substrate infiltrated with the PMMA. And acetylated wine is uh, prepared by acetylated transparent wood, uh, wood substrate infiltrated with PMMA. And all the samples are varied in the thickness. Next, the total transmissions is measured using integrating sphere. And the data for both materials are shown like this. 
From the figure, we can see that with the sample thickness increase, the total transmittances are decreased for both cases. So how to describe the thickness and the total transmittance relationship? To achieve this, we suggested the photon diffusion equation for transparent wood. So the sample with thickness d located in the coordinates with the y-axis in the thickness direction and z along the fiber direction and x perpendicular to z and the y-axis. And of course, the transmitted photons show anisotropic scattering pattern. To describe the photon's behavior in transparent wood, the 3D diffusion equation is suggested. Here, PXYZT is the probability density of the photon at time t in the space, and DXY is the diffusion coefficient perpendicular to the fiber direction, which is along x in the right figure, and DZ is the diffusion coefficient along the fiber direction. And finally, beta is the absorption rate, which is related to the absorption coefficient and the speed of light inside the material. After we solve P for a point light source and integrate from time and space, we obtain this exponential relationship between total transmittance and sample thickness. And the square root part, we call it attenuation coefficient. And next, the total transmittance as a function of sample thickness is fitted with the equation. And the slope is corresponding to the attenuation coefficient, which are 1.67 per centimeter for nine isolated transparent wood and 0.64 per centimeter for isolated one. The lower value for isolated transparent wood is due to the microstructure difference. For example, there's a lot of air gaps between wood substrate and the polymer in non-isolated transparent wood, while it is absent in isolated one. So that's why the attenuation coefficient is lower for this case. To check the validity and the generality of this equation, we prepared isolated transparent wood with a sample thickness of one centimeter and a non-isolated transparent wood with 0.6 centimeter. And the experimental curve is in a good agreement with the predicted value from the equation at different wavelengths. In addition, the birch and ash-based transparent wood also prepared, and the attenuation coefficients are obtained. And both of them is higher than that from balsa. The main reason is the volume fraction of cellulose. It is lower for balsa compared with birch and ash. To summary this part, Start from 3D diffusion equation. The relationship between total transmittance and the sample thickness is obtained. The attenuation coefficient is an intrinsic optical parameter for transparent wood. And this equation can also be used to predict the total transmittance across a wide range of sample thickness and also facilitate the cross comparison of total transmittance of transparent wood made from different wood species. So, air gaps influence the total transmittance, mainly from uh, the scattering phenomenon. However, the refractive index mismatch between the wood substrate and the polymer also influences the total transmittance and scattering. Previously, the, reflect the refractive index of the cellulose-based material is mainly measured based on the single plant fiber or wood powders. However, the complex structure of wood was not considered. If we can measure this accurate value, it is possible to select suitable polymers for aimed transparent wood, transparent wood product. To do this, the liquid immersion method is applied. Here, the delignified wood substrate infiltrated with six different liquids with various refractive indices. The idea of this experiment is that the better match of this refractive index of the liquid, the higher total transmittance of the wood substrate in the liquid. And here is the result. If we look at the wavelength of 589, also from the liquid on the left, the number five shows the highest total transmittance. However, it's not enough to find the accurate value 
for the refractive index of the wood substrate. To do this, a transmission model developed from Fresnel reflection theory is applied. And the Fresnel reflection theory described the reflection at an interface between two media with different refractive indices. So when the light hit on the sample perpendicular to the fiber direction, it will be transmitted directly to the sample or reflected for several times inside the sample. And during this process, the Fresnel reflection will take place at each interface inside the material. For example, the interface between one wood substrate and the surrounding liquids. So after summarizing all these situations, the description of total transmittance is obtained. Here, the A is the linear density of the interfaces inside the material. And X is the refractive ind index of the liquids. And A is the refractive index of the wood substrate. And finally, a prefactor A is added, accounts for the small absorption from the residual ligand inside the substrate. After fit the total transmitted theta with this equation, we obtained the refractive index perpendicular to the fiber direction is around 1.536 for both materials, balsa and birch. Another parameter also obtained, which is linear density of the interfaces, also named as the number of the interfaces per unit thickness. For balsa, it is 138 per millimeter. And for birch, it's 376 per millimeter. To compare this value with the experimental data, SEM images are prepared. For balsa, the average diameter of the, of the cell is around 30 micrometer, and each cell contributes to four interfaces. Two interfaces from wood, wood cell wall and the mid, uh, cell lumen, and two interfaces from cell wall and the middle lamella. And after calculation, the data is between 120 to 160 per millimeter. And similarly, for birch, it's between 320 to 400 per millimeter. And both are agree with the predicted or with the fitted values. To summary this part, liquid emission method combined with the transmission model is applied to measure the refractive index of delineified wood. The obtained refractive index value is helpful for polymer selecting, for example, for aimed transparent wood with different scattering ability, and also modern light behavior inside transparent wood. Until now, we noticed that the air gap between wood substrate and polymer and the refractive index mismatch will influence scattering, especially the total transmitted light. So how scattering inside the transparent wood. The understanding of these uh, scattering mechanisms in transparent wood is helpful to improve the fabrication strategies of transparent wood or manipulate the scattering ability of transparent wood. In this part, two types of scattering processes are included. The forward scattering caused by the refractive index mismatch between wood cell wall and polymer, and really scattering caused by the nanovoice or nanofibrous inside the cell wall. In the first case, when the cell lumen is filled with a refractive index matched polymer, in a very narrow distribution. are very the applied wavelengths of the light. So when the light hits on this kind of scattering centers, the scattering pattern will nearly isotropic. So both scattering processes exist in the light and the transparent interaction. This will increase the photon's path length inside the material. And all A light pulse is transmitted to, from the transparent wood, and the transmitted light is 
boxed by a lens and collected by the detector. The principle is like this. The more scattering experienced by the photon inside the material, the later it reaches the detector. And here is the result with a reference from a pure light pulse. The long de decaying detail of this transparent wood supports the presence of multiple sketching processes in transparent wood. To analyze the sketching mechanisms inside the transparent wood, two types of transparent wood are prepared. The esterified wood substrate infiltrated with either PMMA and Lima, and named as SAPMMA and SAP Lima. And all the samples are varied in volume fraction of cellulose and sample thickness. Now we look at the photon budget map. The ballistic transmittance, which is the non interacting part of the light, it can be mirrored by this bucket setup. The transmitted light, but scattered, will be blocked by the bucket, which means only ballistic transmitted photons will be collected by the detector. And here are the results for two materials. It is very low compared with the glass on the top, the black dots. Fit this data with this equation, we obtain the slope, which is corresponding to the extinction coefficient of the transparent wood. And it's a sum of all the sketching processes and absorption processes. For example, Mu SR is the really scattering coefficient, and mu SF is the forward scattering coefficient. And finally, mu A is the absorption coefficient. The extinction coefficients as a function of volume fraction of cellulose for both materials are summarized in this figure. Both of them show linear increase. For example, with the volume fraction of cellulose increase, the cell, the cell wall thickness also increased. However, the cell lumen diameter is decreased, and both in a linear relationship as a function of volume fraction of cellulose. The higher volume fraction of cellulose in the material, the higher number of the scattering centers. Another case is that when the volume fraction of cellulose approaches zero, there's a, lot, a huge offset of SAPMM sample. This can be attributed to the internal structure of the transparent wood. For example, in SAPMM sample, a lot of avoids of, can be observed between the wood cell wall and polymer, while it is absent in SAP Lima sample. This is due to the covalent bond formed between wood substrate and polymer for SAP Lima samples. So in order to avoid the influence from air voids or air gaps, the SAP Lima is selected for the further investigations. First, we we'll consider the really scattered photons inside the material. When the light hits on the sample, of course, the specular reflection will happen due to the refractive index mismatch, and the other photons will be really scattered. Either backward, which is really scattered reflectance, or forward, which is really scattered transmitters. And of course, absorption exists during this process. Since really scattering is isotropic, in this way, a 2D diffusion equation is suggested to describe the photon's behavior in transparent wood. Here, P is the probability density of the photon at time t in the coordinate, and D is the diffusion coefficient, and the beta is the absorption rate. After we solve P for a distributed light source due to really scattering, and integral it from x and y, we obtain the description for really scattered transmitters and really scattered reflectors. Both of them are related to the really scattering coefficient and absorption coefficient, and of course, sample thickness. In this way, the total transmittance of the photon can be obtained. The really scattered, scattered transmittance is T really, and the right part, right part is the transmitted photons without really scattering and absorption. And of course, we have this uh, ballistic transmittance resulting in the extinction coefficient, which is the sum of all these three parameters. 
And then we consider the reflectance from a single surface for the refractive index mismatch between wood substrate and, and the polymers. They are in the scale of 10 to minus 5 power, which is ignorable. In this case, we can assume the ref diffused reflectance is solely from the reflect really scattered reflectance. So in these three equations, there are three unknowns. Really scattering coefficient, forward scattering coefficient, and absorption coefficient. And three parameters that we can measure from the photon's budget. For the diffused reflectance, it can be measured by the integrating sphere. The total reflectance is measured by putting the sample at the backward of this uh, integrating sphere. And all the reflected photons will be collected by the detector. And for the specular reflectance on the right side, a bucket is used to avoid the, all the scattered reflectance to enter the integrating sphere. In this way, only specular reflected photons will be collected. And finally, the diffused reflectance is obtained by this equation. Here is an example for the photon budget. And after we solve in the three equations from the last slice, using the experiment from here, we obtain the really scattering coefficient and absorption coefficient. Both are in linear with the volume fraction of cellulose. Take an example. For the volume fraction of cellulose at 4.5%, the really scattering coefficient and absorption coefficient is much smaller compared with the extinction, extinction coefficient we obtained before. In this way, the forward scattering coefficient can be obtained, which is a huge part of this extinction coefficient. And it dominates the scattering process during light and the transparent interaction. Now there's a question. Is that means the really scattering can be ignored? To prove this, we measured the contribution of really scattering on diffused transmittance. Here, the totally diffused transmittance is measured by the integration sphere used based on the ASTM standard. In this setup, the scattered photons with a scattering angle larger than 2.5 degrees are collected by the detector. And then the contribution from really scattered photons divided by the diffused transmittance are obtained and shown like this. If we look at the data, for the volume fraction of cellulose around 11% and the sample thickness around 0.4 centimeter, the contribution from really scattered transmittance reaches 20%, which means it cannot be ignored. The reason for this is the really scattering is isotropic and it contributes to the diffused transmittance directly after the first scattering event. While for forward scattering, it requires multiple events to achieve scattering angle larger than 2.5 degrees. To summarize this part, three photons behaviors are summarized. Forward scattering caused by the refractive index mismatch, really scattering inside the cell wall, and absorption due to the rest of ligning. Extinction coefficient is obtained, which is influenced by the air voice or air gaps and volume fraction of cellulose. Combined with photon diffusion theory, we obtained that the forward scattering dominates scattering processes during light and transport interaction. And the absorption coefficient and really scattering coefficient are minor. However, the later one has strong effect on diffused transmittance. In conclusion, the relationship between transparent wood structure and optical properties are investigated. The anatropic scattering is caused by the fiber alignment inside the wood substrate of transparent wood. The anatropy of transparent wood is described by the degree of anatropic scattering. The attenuation coefficient is related to the air gaps and the volume fraction of cellulose. And finally, the refractive index of porous wood templates are merit. In addition, the scattering mechanisms in transparent wood are also investigated. And the photon budget measurement combined with the photon diffusion equation is applied for the first time to obtain the various optical parameters of transparent wood quantitatively. 
It improved the understanding of this transparent as a sketching material and also the results are helpful for materials design of transparent wood and other types of transparent composites. For example, we can tune the tailor, the interface, ta we can use interface tailoring or selecting suitable polymers or control the fiber aggregations and the infiltration of monomer inside the cell wall to control the light sketching ability of transparent wood. For future work, until now, most of our, of our samples are made from the wood substrate with the fiber direction perpendicular to the thickness direction. However, with the fiber direction along the thickness direction not investigated, which is also possible to investigate the optical property of this type of material. And wood fiber or nanocellulose based transparent composites, for example, transparent paper, also need to, need to be investigated for the optical property. And finally, since cellulose is kind of a birefragentive material, so how does the wood template show this phenomenon? Because it is anastropic. So the birefragency effects on the anastropic scattering of a transparent wood also need to be investigated. Finally, I would like to thank my supervisors, Professor Lash Berland, Associate Professor Ilya Shichkov, and Docent Max Yem. And also thanks all the colleagues collaborators and colleagues at Biocomposite Group and Wallenberg Wood Science Center. And the funding agencies are also acknowledged. Keynote and Alice Wallenberg Foundation and the European Research Council. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.